Hello there. Do you tend to put other people's needs before your own? Maybe you take responsibility for their happiness. Maybe you find it hard to say no because of guilt, feelings of guilt. And so you tend to kind of jump in and rescue people. You give in to their requests and their needs. And, and that means that you lose your time, your energy, and maybe even money. But you find it really hard to actually set those boundaries to be that little bit more assertive. Rescuing is one of the most common ways of people pleasing. I think pretty much all of us do it from time to time. If we're doing it a lot, then it becomes a problem because it gets in the way of our happiness, our time, our energy and our happy relationships. Our relationships become kind of off balance where we're always the giver. And any relationship that's off balance is not a happy relationship. Of course, sometimes we do need to rescue somebody. They may be lacking in confidence at a low ebb in their life. Perhaps some, something's happened in their life or perhaps it's a practical thing or a, a, a physical help that, that they need our help. And of course, there's nothing wrong with stepping in and rescuing them at that point. What I'm talking about, though, is that kind of habitual rescuing that we can fall into the habit of doing. And that's never a helpful thing. If you follow me, you'll know that I often talk about conscious kindness versus misguided kindness. And misguided kindness is the kind of the rescuing thing. It's like when we keep giving in and we say, oh, you know, life will be quicker and easier. I'll do it for you. Um, I don't want to kind of have any bad feeling. So I'll just I'll just do it for you. But I'll smooth things over. And in the long run, we're not really helping ourselves and we're not really helping the other person to learn and to grow and to evolve. Whereas when we have conscious kindness, that's what we're doing. We're helping everybody. We're looking at the bigger picture in a win-win situation. So it's about encouraging the other person rather than rescuing them. A lot of my clients come to me and they say, you know, I'd like to be more assertive. I keep rescuing people and I, I have people, somebody in my family or a friend or my partner, and I keep sort of giving in and rescuing them. And I really would like to be more assertive, but I'm worried that I'll cause a conflict or, that, you know, they'll react badly or, you know, I'll feel rejected or they'll feel rejected. And, I, I, you know, they see being assertive as being this sort of one way negative thing. And what we need to do really is find balance. We need to be able to find the balance between actually setting those boundaries and being kind. That's why I wrote my book, How Kind People Get Tough, because it's all about that balance, isn't it? So how can we find that balance? A really good way to do that is to recognize the difference between rescuing and supporting. So what's the difference between rescuing and supporting? Well, as I said, when we rescue, it kind of is keeps us in a negative space because we're giving away our time, we're giving away our energy, maybe even money. And actually we, we can end up feeling a bit resentful and there's kind of negative thoughts going around in our head. Oh, I wish I didn't have to do this. Why did I say I'd do it? Oh, here we go again. I've done it again. I've given in to them. And you kind of feel a bit burdened by all that. So when we support somebody, what we do is we stand by their side. We offer them that, that loving kindness, but we don't do it for them. We actually encourage them to do it for themselves. So we're not rejecting them. We're not going anywhere. We're, we're letting them know that we're there. We will listen to them. We'll guide them. We'll go along with them if they need to go somewhere to get help. We're always there by their side, but we are encouraging them to help themselves. And when we support people, what we do, everything feels lighter. It feels easier. Your relationship feels better because the person is feeling happier in themselves because they know that you have every confidence in them 
and actually you are creating positive change because they have somewhere to go with that. You both have somewhere to go with that. You're having boundaries, you know, you're putting boundaries in place and that feels good for you. And they're finding ways to help themselves and growing in confidence. So it's not a kind of a dead end, nowhere to go. Here we go around in a circle again. It's about learning and growing and evolving all change for the better for everybody concerned. So if rescuing tends to keep us stuck and supporting is a really good idea, how do we do the support thing? Okay, so the very first thing you can do if you want to support somebody rather than rescue them is listen to their worries. You know, we human beings, we need to be listened to. We need to be heard. It's an important part of connecting with each other. They say a trouble shared is a trouble halved. And actually, it's quite true. Sometimes it's better not to jump in and fix it and do it for the person, but just to, to encourage them to talk about what that thing is that's worrying them. Why is it worrying them? What do they fear? What are they concerned about? And actually just be there as a supportive listener. Because quite often, the, the fact that they've been heard will make them feel so much lighter and so much better. And in time, through that conversation and through being heard and given time, they may well be able to process solutions for themselves because they'll feel better, they'll feel more empowered. Second thing you can do, as I say, feeling empowered, is to ask that person empowering questions. So as you're listening to them and giving them lots and lots of space to listen and listening, you can just ask them a few questions here and there, empowering questions. So rather than, oh, I'm okay, I'll come and do that for you. It's what small steps could you take to actually resolve this problem? Do you remember the last time you had a problem? What did you do then that helped you? Or even, I wonder what professional person who's qualified to help you with this, who's got experience, I wonder who there is who could help you. Do you want me to come with you? Do you want me to help you Google that or come to an appointment with you? So you're supporting them by being by their side, but you're actually asking them to stop and consider how they could help themselves. And by doing that, you're handing back that responsibility to them. You're still being kind and loving because you're not going anywhere and you're really empowering them. And the third thing you can do to support people is to really validate them, you know, really, really encourage them and tell them I have every faith in you I remember when you had a problem before and you resolved that and it was great you know I completely trust that you've got the strength to do this and if they're still wobbling you can actually come back to your empowering question say what little bit in this issue could you do while I help with the other bit so you're still supporting them because you're still encouraging them to help themselves and you're just doing that little bit of extra whatever help they need alongside them. So when, we, when we're able to understand the difference between rescuing and supporting, and we're able to put supporting into practice, my goodness, it makes such a difference. You know, people kind of trust us more when we're in a supportive role because they know where they stand with us. If we're feeling a bit resentful because we're rescuing somebody, people do pick up on resentment, even though we try to hide it. And actually, if we are able to say, I'll support you and put those supporting ways of being into practice with them, then they know where they stand and they, they know that what, they, what you say is, is true. What they see is what they get. That's it. And so you have a much closer much more connected relationship with them. And they know that you are the one who is there, the wise person who's helping them and guiding them and helping them to grow. And that's what they really want. That's what we all really want. We all want to learn. We all want to grow. And we all want to evolve. 
And so by being much more supportive rather than rescuing, we all win. So I'd love to hear your comments on rescuing versus supporting. Is this something you've experienced in your life? Have you ever thought about it before? Is this the first time you've thought about it? Is it something you could maybe put into practice in one of your relationships or maybe several of your relationships? If you like this video, please do hit the thumbs up like button. That way more people get to see it and you're helping me to help them. Do hit subscribe also, because that means you'll know when the next video is up. And I look forward to seeing you next time.